So when we wake up, well, we can use me as an example. Um, I don't know if age matters, but I'll give it to you anyway. I'm 45 and I wake up around five o'clock and for forever, Stacey, I, I would work out fasted. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because that's what we were, we were like. Hey, this that's will what be we're good. taught to do. We're yeah, to do. And all my friends were doing it, and they were really good athletes and strong and healthy and fit and really good at CrossFit. So I'm like, I'm going to do that too. And I'll be honest, when I first started playing around with intermittent fasting, I would wake up. I was really hungry. I would get over the hunger, and then I would eat. I think I would break my fast after noon, but I would or after one maybe even. Now I work out and. It felt pretty good for a while. It, I mean, it did, but I wasn't, I wasn't getting any I, stronger, and I didn't see any kind of difference in my in my uh, physical appearance. I couldn't tell you about sleep or anything. I wasn't tracking and having metrics. Um, but it, ultimately, I just w- didn't enjoy it. I love breakfast, and I feel better when I did it. So I went back to eating food uh, before I before I started my day. And then most recently I started working out early again. So I work out at 6 a.m. And I was told by a doctor that did a bunch of my blood work that it might be helpful for me if I had a little snack before I went to the gym. And so I've been doing that. I've been having a little bit of gluten-free bread with some banana and a little bit of peanut butter. And um nice. and the jury's still out as to kind of what what it will look like because I'm still I'm only like a month or so in. But is that what you're saying is Hey, let's get up. Let's have a little snack within 30 minutes. And you can talk maybe to us about what that snack is. Cause I can imagine people like, I can't eat that early. Um, the 5 a.m. club, I can't eat. It's like, there are things that we can yeah. do. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do for that if you're somebody? Well, first of all, sorry, I, that was long winded. And Maggie will probably cut that. Out. Maggie, don't cut that out. She'll probably cut it out. Important. Important. But I wanted to ask uh, one. What do you do if if you recommend that somebody does uh, have a little snack before they start their day, their workout? And two, is this for every woman or are there some women that do benefit from fasting? So I'll start with the benefit of fasting. If you are sedentary and obese and you need to get more blood glucose control or lose um, body fat, the jury is mixed on fasting versus calorie restriction. Some women find it easier to fast because they don't feel hungry in the morning and that becomes a terms of calorie restriction. But as soon as you add activity in, like structured exercise, even if you're going for a walk in the morning, you do need fuel. So this is where we start to see a misstep between clinical research and the fitness world. So when we are looking at the fueling aspect, if you're going to go for a walk and come home and have breakfast, sweet, right? That's fine. Do you really need a snack? Ideally, yes, but it's not going to be as detrimental to your body as someone like you who gets up and does a hard session first thing in the morning. We need fuel to bring our blood glucose up and to stimulate cortisol drop. Because if we go into a training session with elevated cortisol, we're already in a stressed state. So when we start to do the intensity work, we're not going to get the same stimulus because the body's trying to mitigate the natural stress response as well as the exercise response, because exercise in itself is a massive stressor, and your body has to respond in kind by having an increase in our heart rate, changes in our our blood distribution. We see we have to have rapid blood perfusion to the muscle for fueling the muscle, removing some of the metabolic waste, thermoregulation. There's so many things that happen during exercise by having a small amount of food on board, it facilitates a lot of those responses without additional stress. So your body's like, yep, great. I can do this exercise stress. And then I'm able to recover from it. So if we don't go in with a snack, you're just really increasing the overall stress load. And most women can't hit the intensities they want because they feel a bit too gassed or tired too soon in the workout. So just a small amount of food helps. This could be anywhere from the viral protein coffee, be your bread and peanut butter and banana. For people who are in the 5 a.m. club, um, you know, if it has to be something liquid, maybe you're having four ounces or 250 mil of a protein smoothie or even a protein drink. You just need to have a little bit of carb and protein on board. So if we're looking at a CrossFit workout, it's around 15 grams of protein before 
your session and 30 grams of carbohydrate. So it's not a lot. We think about what does 15 grams of protein look like? It could be two to three tablespoons of low-fat Greek yogurt and a little bit of honey. If you want to make that into a protein shake, sweet. If you don't want to do dairy, you don't have to. You just want to make sure that you are getting a little bit of food and then you have your real breakfast afterwards. What is your special recipe that you go to in the morning? Oh, I've been doing protein coffee for decades because I am a coffee snob, fully admit that. I love it. Same. And I'm like, I, okay, well, well. you're in New Zealand too, and they have great coffee in New Zealand. They do. Yes. I will say that being in the States for the past month, I'm dying because there is no good coffee here. <laughs> like, yeah. Even if they do an espresso drink, I'm like, this is still not good. But like, hmm. <laughs> Coffee snob. Yeah. So um, if I'm doing, like I started just doing a latte, but I was like, wait, I know it's protein. So I just mixed in protein into my cold um, iced coffee. And then I was like, magic, that's what I need because it's an eating opportunity. I'm not saying that everyone has to have a massive 30 gram protein coffee before they work out, but it's a definitely an eating opportunity, ability to get protein in rather quickly and it fuels the system for the workout. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what do you say? To the people who are listening to this, right? And they're like, I've been fasting my whole life and I feel great. This this information is false. I am yes. thriving. What, yep. what do you say to that? I hear that all the time. I'm like, how do you know unless you try something different? <laughs> Have a little bit of a snack. See how you feel. You might hit a plateau and you might be at a status quo and you're like fighting it and going, how come I'm not gaining? Where's Where are my gains? Cannot build muscle without an abundance. And so part of the abundance is having food before you train so that your brain is like, yeah, great. There is an opportunity here to in, to understand the stress and to actually thrive and adapt to it. One of the other reasons that people talk about fasting is looking for the longevity where we're looking at telomere lengths. We're also looking at things like increasing free fatty acid mobilization and utilization. And when we look specifically at the data on men, that holds true. When we look at the data on women, we see that women are already very metabolically flexible because we have more oxidative fibers and we have a menstrual cycle. So estrogen and and progesterone facilitate metabolic flexibility by the nature of being those sex hormones. Progesterone pulls carbohydrate and glucose out. So estrogen's like, okay, I need to spare it and use more free fatty acids. And when we don't have estrogen progesterone and we're in our low hormone phase, the body happily uses more carbohydrate than free fatty acids. So it's very metabolically flexible. For men, they're not that way. Men use more liver and muscle glycogen. So doing fasted training encourages metabolic flexibility. When we see men holding a fast for a longer period of time, because their circadian rhythm is longer, it doesn't really impede their circadian rhythm to the extent that it does for women. But the other thing we see with women who do uh, hold a fast or do fasted training, that later on in the day, they fidget less, they move less, and they crave more simple carbohydrates. So we start to see people who are having that 3 p.m. slump and they're like, I just need, I need some sugar or I need some caffeine. If you were to have a little bit of food before your training, it attenuates that. And we see more movement, more incidental movement, especially in people who are highly motivated and otherwise would move more. If they had that food beforehand, then it doesn't tell the body it needs to conserve. 